guys. Welcome back to the Wildflower Podcast. We are happy to be back after taking a multiple week break. It's been really nice, actually, really refreshing. Um, But I'm excited about this episode because as we're moving into, well, next week is Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So I thought this would be a cool thing for us to talk about. Ashton and I were going back and forth on how we want to wrap up this year. And so we're going to have this episode and then maybe one or two more, maybe just one more. We'll see. Um, and wrap up the year and then we'll like hit 2023 really strong. And we're excited for that and already praying into that. But today we're going to just kind of talk about thankfulness and gratitude. And I know that can sound cheesy going into Thanksgiving because obviously it's like, Oh, what are you thankful for? But I think really reflecting on, for me this morning, as I was really thinking about this, I was really thinking about just where my heart's at and like all that the Lord's done this year. And it really like, it uh, honestly, I texted you this morning on the way over here. I was like, it made me so emotional. Here we are starting right off the bat, <laughs> getting choked up, but just emotional of what the Lord's done this year and uh, thankfulness and gratitude and just so much. And so we're going to kind of dive into that. And we were talking yesterday about Ashton was talking about a pure heart and like a heart of gold. I love that phrase. You know, that was something that was highlighted to me for her um, on her birthday this year. It's just like you, she really does have a heart of gold. And I feel like diving into that and what that concept looks like coming before the Lord with clean hands and a pure heart and mm-hmm. all of this stuff. So it's going to be a good conversation. So let's just dive yeah. right in. I think it's, um, you know, I think everything starts with your the posture of your heart. Like it's just out of the mouth flows the abundance of your heart. And it's kind of mm-hmm. weird because it, it doesn't mean that your heart is bad all the time or yeah. you know like I think when people hear that you're love they're like oh you know my heart no but it, it ha- like having a pure heart like clean hands and a pure heart like it, we're constantly purifying our hearts and yeah. our minds and our spirits and it's easy for things to kind of come in and cloud that that's right um, and I think the heart of gold really is indicative of like even just your pursuit of the Lord like mm-hmm. there's seasons where we do have to clean up our act or clean up our hearts you know because mm-hmm. I know that we can get so focused on what's not instead of what is that's right um and so you know being thankful it says we enter his courts with thanksgiving and Mm -hmm. praise and i I think that that when you were and when you were talking you know i I heard the song you know mercy culture they have all kinds of cool songs but i don't know if this is even a song Mm -hmm. but they say celebrate the lord yeah celebrate the lord look at all he's done for us and as we were talking that's really what kind of came into my mind because i think when you celebrate what god has done there's something so powerful about a way to connect with god is through remembrance and Mm -hmm. that's partly thankfulness too i think remembrance yeah. and thankfulness go hand in hand of looking back at all of the things that he's done in your life where he's brought you and yeah yeah and when you enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise it shifts the posture of your heart so a lot of times when i'm in a terrible mood i have to go okay god like thank you that I have, I'm alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you that I'm praying this prayer. Thank you that I'm driving in my car, that I'm going somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, And even it's just our nature is so like, it's just so easy to be consumed with what's not. And it starts That's at right. a young age because I see my daughter, you oh, know, yeah. and I mean, obviously I get like that too, but she focuses on, you know, it's our natural sin nature. Well, Cause to we're, focus we're on it. Sel- human beings are naturally selfish. We're thinking yeah. about how can I make my life more comfort, comfortable. I want mm-hmm. a life of ease. I don't want to be whatever, you know, how do I get out of, okay, I'm experiencing discomfort. Mm-hmm. How do I get out of that? You know, and something that I was thinking about this morning that was highlighted to me was, um, so whenever I was pregnant with Brody, I one day started looking up, uh, YouTube videos on like people who were pregnant at the same time as me and like updates and like birth vlogs and like all this kind of stuff. Right. And when I was going into having him, I was wanting to do a natural birth. And so I was like watching these birth videos on how to have a natural birth. And I remember this girl that, that had had multiple natural births saying, you know, when the contractions come and the labor pains come to like, let that like wash over you and sort of like to lean into that. And I was thinking about that this morning. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I am Just not slamming her phone everywhere. <laughs> but I was thinking about that in our life of how when we experience pain and discomfort and like these, these seasons where we try to defy it we try to get out of it as quickly as possible and I just felt heavy like the Lord was saying like lean into those pains Mm -hmm. let it wash over you and let let it refine you and I feel like because in any process of like we've been talking a lot about this you know off 
Purifying recording gold and how how does it made how is this yeah. yeah and just like the birthing of like to get to the promise to get to the blessing you have to go through these pains and the mm-hmm. process to actually birth something amazing mm-hmm. and um and I just felt like the Lord was saying yeah like lean into those seasons ask the Lord in your in your hard seasons like practical things like what are you teaching me right now? Like why, like why, as I sit here in this thing that is uncomfortable or that is not what I want it to be yet, like what do you need to remove from me? What do you need to add to me to make me whole? And I think asking these questions, like the Lord will answer those things and like let it, let him teach you mm-hmm. where are the areas, like what, what, why are you in the season that you're in? You know, I think so rather than asking questions of like, how do I get out of it? It's more of like, what are you showing me through this, you know? Yeah, and, and thank, thank him for it. When you think about right. um, always being a student and, and, you know, the teacher is is God the Father and Jesus, right. right? So if you're always learning and you're constantly have the posture of, I do not have this figured out, it doesn't matter mm-hmm. how long you've been walking with the Lord, how long you've been a Christian, how long you've been reading your Bible. Like, it, it doesn't matter if you always have the posture of going, hey, I'm the student, you are the teacher. That's right. Because he says, he says that he will teach us. Mm-hmm. He'll teach us. It says, teach us your ways, you know, teach us your ways. And um, what's that scripture it talks about? The scripture about? You, sh- you have been talking about a lot lately is um, study how I did yeah, it. Yeah, study how I did it. And Hebrews, tw- well, that's Hebrews 12 Hebrews, too, where it yeah. talks about, um, it talks about the race we're running, you know. And I've always had this like intent of just studying how Jesus did it because he laid it out pretty um pretty clearly mm-hmm. of how he did it studying his behavior thanking him because when you think about people that mentor you and people that are tan you know that you can touch that mm-hmm. you're like learning from yeah. we tell them thank you yeah we tell them thank you when they correct us that's right right and so i think what's crazy about you know being a, a student of you know the gospel and, mm-hmm. and and learning from the lord is like we forget that like he think about the teachers that love you in this life that train you. I think about all the women that have trained me up in dance and just leadership and yeah. bar method and in like every avenue of my life. I've said thank you mm-hmm. for like pointing out my blind spots. Thank you for you think about all these times that they're harder on you because they know your potential and they mm-hmm. know where you're going and which is sometimes indicative of our wilderness seasons. The Lord Lord knows what He's calling you to. Some people's wilderness seasons are harder than others. Oh, I yeah. feel like. And we have to have the character, I say this all the time, to back the call of God and the That's move right. of God in our lives, right? So if we, we don't, you don't develop character and integrity without walking through the un- unfavorable through situations the and God even that's why he says that's why I, why I pulled up that Psalms 105 I couldn't remember where it was but it says we are told to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise when we come to God we have so many reasons to thank him and it says bless him there's another version that mm-hmm. says and bless him yeah so there's something that shifts in the atmosphere when you get before his presence and you go thank you Lord like you started mm-hmm. out saying thank you well like it talks about that in your prayers in your of prayers like, you know yes. don't come before the Lord just saying Lord, praying for this, give me this, give me that, you know, honor him, bless him. I feel like that's Mm -hmm. something. And that's what shifts not only like worshiping him, but like it shifts your heart of realizing like, no, I do have so much to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. We all have like areas that aren't exactly where we want them to be, but that's life. That's how it's always going to be. And I think like when you just realize that the Lord has everything to offer you and Mm -hmm. it's just like, your complete, like you said, your heart posture begins to change. And just like in everyday life too, it's not just like, oh, you know, in your quiet time, you start to realize like when you can come into the gates of the Lord, like his presence with a thankful heart um, and bless the Lord, then you're able to, and it's like, I keep going back to celebrate the Lord. Yes. When you, when you celebrate the Lord and you look, and you look at all that he's done, like I'm always blown away because mm-hmm. in my human nature, I forget about the things he's done mm-hmm. um, just through time, through the process of life. Like I'll go back and go, wow, he saw me through that. Mm-hmm. Wow. He saw me through that. Wow. He was there, you know, and I, and I try to teach Taya when she's upset and I have to exercise this myself because, you know, when I get upset, I don't naturally revert to this, but I go close your eyes where is the Lord? Yeah. Right. Like, where is he in this season where, you know, when you feel like so overwhelmed, when you get in his gate to go, thank you, God, that you are here. Show me where you are. Yeah. Where are you? And I always encourage people to close their eyes and ask the Lord that, where are you Lord? Um, because yeah, it translates into like how you parent, how you are as a spouse, Mm -hmm. how you are as a friend, how you are as a leader, a coworker, you're able to celebrate people That's right. because you understand how to celebrate the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like you're, it it just changes your heart Totally. because I feel like thankfulness 
it like softens the heart. It says, I'll give you a heart. I'll replace your heart of stone with a heart of flesh. That's right. I don't know where that is in the Bible, but um, I'll look that up. But it's like, that's what happens. Your heart starts to soften. Because it's the the enemy too. I feel like that wants to continually remind you of what is not. And so, you know, when you consider that every thought that pops in your head is either your thought, like a, I'm going to move this cup Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or it's like the Holy spirit or it's the enemy Mm -hmm. and you have to identify what those are. But then, yeah, like if you continue to just listen to the voice of the enemy, then you begin to focus on those things that are not the things that are less than ideal. And that happens, your heart turns to stone. That's right. That's what it's like that. That's why that. That's literally what it is. Only God can give you that heart of flesh. Yeah. Only God can suffer the heart. Not circumstances. Yeah. Like I was telling a friend this week, I'm like, I like feel like this, like lately I just like walk around like speaking in scripture Mm -hmm. (laughs) to myself because I just like it's like you need it to just flood just kind of like flood your like every bit of my day of going no like I'm going to continue to speak truth and keep my heart soft and open to what the Lord's doing Mm -hmm. versus like focusing on the things that are not but it's right it's crazy like I just I felt like this you know the last few days just reflecting on this year so much and where the Lord's brought me. You look at like what the Lord spoke, you know, my words for the beginning of the year. And then I go, okay, well, as I leaned into those things and I did it, I did what he asked me Mm -hmm, to do. mm -hmm. Um, being disciplined and consistent and one, and in lots of areas, but one of the main areas was in my time with the Lord. And as Mm -hmm. I did that, you know, I sit here now, like my heart is just so different. My, my walk with the Lord is so much more intimate than I had ever experienced. And I just feel like, you know, I never knew how to get there. And I feel like I want to encourage you guys, like whatever you desire, like if you desire to know the Lord more, hear the Lord more, like get in his presence. There's no shortcuts. There's no way around it, around it. But like literally that shifts everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, so just sitting here coming up before Thanksgiving and the end of the year, And just thinking of all the Lord's done, you know, I was praying the other day and I was like, man, it took me back to the episode we did on disappointment. And I talked about my my number one disappointment was not getting that deal with Sony. And what's wild is the other day or uh, maybe a month ago, as I was praying, I was like, man, I was thanking the Lord for that because sometimes our greatest disappointment ends up being the greatest gift. Mm -hmm. And I think we're always praying, God, open doors, God, use me, do these things. And we're grateful for open doors, but I think shifting your perspective as well of saying, no, thank you for closing doors, Mm -hmm. closing the doors that I wasn't supposed to walk through, preserving me. Because if that had happened, like I would have never found the Lord in this way. And you think about, I was taken to like the parable of like finding the pearl finding the treasure Mm -hmm. in Matthew 13. And it's like finding the treasure of the Lord, finding the Lord's voice. Like all of that is like greater than anything you could find on this earth. I'm sorry. I'm so emotional. I just am like, it's, (laughs) it's wild, you know, it's the remembrance thing. I think just thinking through. So yeah, you know, I think whatever is been a disappointment in your life, whatever, um, hard thing you're walking through because we all have different things Mm -hmm. it's like the bible literally says count it all joy and it's like it's sometimes really hard to do that because honestly some days suck Mm -hmm. some days are hard sometimes you feel on top of the world and then some days you don't (laughs) no and um but i think it's a perspective it's where are your eyes focused are they focused on the thing are they focused on jesus And I think remembering his character, speaking, like coming, like you said, with thankfulness, speaking the characteristics of who God is, how much he loves you. Like that's what begins to like infiltrate your whole being and change your heart. For sure. I, uh, you know, I think we laugh because you're the crier and I'm really not the crier, but it's like, (laughs) I also get like, I hear, I get pulled, like I hear the Lord and you know, it's, um, also like the process, like this isn't such a cool year watching you pursue and chase after the Lord because it's so fresh and so raw and so new and God's always so good. And every year you build some kind of different like strength Mm -hmm. internally. Um, it's been really cool to watch you pursue the Lord like that in private, you know? And, um, I remember being a lot more emotional the year I really, really did that. And I mean, I've always spent time with God, but like, you know, that was probably, maybe four or five years ago where I was really like, whoa, like my heart was really opened. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, I think I talked about this in a podcast. So it was in a million pieces and I watched the Lord piece me back together yeah. in ways I didn't know. Um, and even as you were talking, you know, just circumstances change. And I think a lot of times we think about um, 
when my circumstance changes, I'm, it's going to be better. Right. And I think mm-hmm. that, you know, you talk, you spoke into that, but it's like, even when your circumstances do change and your mood shifts, your personality shifts and, you know, you're temporarily like I'm better. Right. Yeah. Your heart of stone is still a heart of stone. Mm-hmm. Because nothing can change that except for the Lord. Yeah. And and that's why you feel like I'm up and I'm down and I'm up and I'm down and I'm okay and then I'm not okay and then I'm okay. It's like you're like, when am I going to get out of this rat race of being like on this roller coaster? Mm-hmm. And I speak from experience because that's what I used to um, really endure a lot. I'm high, I'm low, I'm high, I'm low. Just waiting for the next shift to happen so I could be happy again. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, you know, happiness is fleeting. But true joy comes from the Lord and, and, and really going, no, God, thank you. Yeah. And thanking him in those, in the good and the bad circumstances, I was taken to remem- remembering Job. So if you want to like talk about someone who's Job, been through yes. it, Job. And so I read good. that and it depressed me. I was like, please don't do this to me. <laughs> right. But I didn't understand at that beginning, at the beginning of reading Job, I didn't understand like what he went through, but I was reminded as we were talking in Job about, it's like Job 1, 20 through 21. This is the new international version. It says, then he fell to the ground in worship and said, naked, I came from my mother's womb and naked, I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Right. And the wild thing is we think that we can't be thankful when we're in excruciating circumstances, you know, um, and it's, this isn't the same as like gaslighting your friends or yourself into putting a fake smile on. No. I think a lot of times people think, oh, the gospel is like sliding some fake smile on, you know, and I think that that's not. Unfortunately, I feel like that's a lot of what some Christians have done. Oh my gosh. So maybe that's yeah. why people associate it that way of going, oh, we'll just put on a happy face, sweep it under the rug, but that's not what we're talking about. No, and I think you can openly, I think there's like freedom and openly grieving and yeah. openly talking about the things that are, are grieving your heart and your spirit. And then going back to the Lord and humbling yourself, it says hands held high, our hands are high. I always think hands held high, hearts bowed low. And that's going that's humbling right. yourself in the pri- in the quiet space going, God, I'm going to thank you. I'm going to enter your gates still with thanksgiving, even mm-hmm. though I'm openly grieving. You go read Lamentations or Job even. Yeah. Like he said, naked, I came from my mother's womb naked I depart from this world because we are nothing without the spirit of God right. living inside our bodies are nothing yeah like our spirits what gives it life and just listening to him talk about how I will let praise come off of my lips what that does that's a weapon in the spiritual realm it's that's a right. weapon to praise God it's a weapon to worship in your mm-hmm. pain that's the only thing that we can do that's right and it just gave me chills because it's like you know same I have goosebumps under my Thick the, the, I'm like, the, what, what's so profound about that is that think about it in our human experience. We're not robots. We're not these like, you know, I follow you. It's the only thing on this side of heaven that we choose to do. We can choose to worship in grief. We can choose to worship in pain or not, mm-hmm. but that's, we have that choice. Right. We can't think about it when we're in heaven one day or when we're, you know, reigning on the ruling and reigning, like we don't choose to, there is no grief. There is no yeah, sorrow. That's something right. about the human experience that I think is so profound that we get to choose the Lord in our that's grief right. and we get to celebrate him, love him, thank him. Because it's like, okay, when someone passes away or something terrible happens to you, do you blame everybody else? Why do we always blame God? Mm-hmm. Because we expect, I mean, do we expect our mom and our dads to fix everything in our lives when we're adult people? But see, that's what's all, always so interesting to me is because I'm like, the Bible never said like that <laughs> following Jesus, that everything's just going to be perfect no, the all the time. Church but it's, it's because that's what, yeah. And it's people chasing after comfort and all of this stuff of like, I don't want to ever feel pain, but that's not realistic. I mean, the Bible says in so many different scriptures and so many different ways, like when you encounter trials, when, mm-hmm. you know, it talks about all these things because it says it's going to happen, but then we're going to count it joy. We're going to turn our eyes to Jesus. Like we're going to ask for peace yeah. that surpasses understanding. We're going to let him replace, you know, turn our mourning into dancing, turn our beauty, you know, take our ashes and turn it to beauty. And I just feel like you just have to remind yourself like that he will use everything. Like everything, he works that everything, everything for good, good. for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. And I think people like say these things with empty words, like, you know, like, oh, I'm saying the scripture, right? But you have to like believe it. And when you really actually think about what it's saying, like I was reminded of that this morning of going, or yesterday, the Lord was showing me some stuff and just saying, look, every single moment in your life, these are pivotal moments and they are all going to be used for good. Like the good stuff, the bad stuff, the, the choices you made, the choices you didn't, the things that just hurt your heart, whatever the, all of it, Mm -hmm. it like when you understand like, yeah, there's things that obviously we have free will and we make choices and blah, blah, blah. There's also things that happen that we don't choose that grieve our hearts. But when you go, man, like he's going to, all of the the process of it. I just think the refining process, you go, thank you, Jesus, because 
what's the ultimate prize? Finding God, but it comes finding back this to the intimacy belief. with the Lord. And you never find that if you have everything you want. Right. But it also goes back to the lie that people believe. They don't believe God is good. So we right. say these things to you guys, assuming that you believe God is good. But the problem is, is most people don't believe in the nature and the goodness of God because they don't study his qualities. They don't study what That's has right. he done? How does he love me? How does he love people? And so you can't expect think about how much do you love your mom or you love me or you love whoever yeah. it's like because you've spent time with them mm -hmm. you 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 come to know their nature that's you right. come to see what they do for you and what they don't do for you or whatever they walk with you in right. life and you sit there and go that you're so attached to them from that standpoint mm -hmm. you talked earlier about your intimacy with the lord and how it shifted everything yeah. i mean it goes back to that the key to unlocking you know that relationship is the time spent, you know, mm -hmm. but it's like, if you don't believe God is good, nobody can teach you that. Nobody on the pulpit no. standing, that saying all these things about God, you have to go and start to search out the heart of God. And we blame, you know, I, I was taken to, as you were talking, just thinking about like everything in this world, like we use our imagination, right? You think about all these movies we watch and all these mm -hmm. creative art. Where do people think that comes from? Right. Like, cause to me, it's so like true. over here, I always think like the Lord speaks to me in pictures and he shows me a lot of things. And it's like, I see life as kind of a game. Like the game of life to me is like a kind of a prophetic thing because I'm over here going, it is like a movie. Our lives are like a movie. Yeah. What do people think? Like think about television. Mm -hmm. Tell a vision. That's television. Right. Yeah. Sorry, she always says to me, can I get, go back away from that <laughs> mic? But like you're telling a vision. We're That's telling right. a story. Our lives are a story. So when people say God is not real, this is all fake. I mean, I don't even know how you can even be like begin to comprehend mm -hmm. that because then who created anything? Yeah. How are we here? Where, where do these stories come from? Just, where does this creativity come from? Where does your imagination come from? Right. What? what like I mean it, it just appeared it shocks me because I'm over here going that's what your life is like you're telling a story the Lord is living through you telling your story right. and we're all serving this you know greater purpose and it's like we have to fall in love with the Lord mm -hmm. and and believe that he is good to even be thankful for that yeah you know I I feel like sometimes people think it's this thing that just like poof happens one day or it's like a crutch like oh you know? I'm just leaning on Jesus because things are bad they use God yeah. as a crutch too. Yeah. I don't, you know? Yeah. Well, but it's like, I don't know. I used to like, I can, cause I can think back to like when I felt different. I always loved the Lord, but I was always like, I don't think I love the Lord. I love, I just believed I, in Christianity. I believe that's what it is. I'm going to just be honest. I, mean, I believe, I believe he Jesus the was the son of God. I believe. Yeah. I mean, all <laughs> but that. But I didn't love Jesus, but if I loved him. I wouldn't struggle. I mean, maybe, know? maybe so. I mean, you just sit there and you I go, I didn't know him. Yeah. I think knowing him and I think I desired, okay, like I used to look at people that pastors or that just would walk with such authority or boldness or be able to just pop off scripture all the time. And I'd be like, I desired that. Like, oh, I want to know the Bible like that. I want to do that. But like, but I hadn't put in the time. I'm still in the process of that. Like you never arrive, like we always say, but it's like you go, those things start to begin to happen in you the more time you spend. And I just, I come back to like, I feel like some people desire that, but they think there's some shortcut, but I'm not going to actually spend the time day in, day out for extended periods of time with the Lord, but I'm going to expect to know him on an intimate, intimate level. Like that, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. You can't know anybody. Well, you don't build a relationship with anybody that no. way. I mean, the deeper you go, the higher you go. And I think people, um, we're all spiritual beings. We all were given irrevocable mm -hmm. gifts when we were born. And, you know, walking in that, like the Lord can accelerate anything with your pursuit. So like basically you go as high as, as deep as you want, like as deep as you go, the higher you go and the higher, I mean, is the more spiritually mature you become and the more you see God. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that's a big thing is, you know, if you're, if you're like, Hey, I don't believe God is good. There's nothing wrong with you. I thought about that a lot and didn't know that I didn't believe he was good because I, ex I expected him to fix my circumstances, mm -hmm. but that really was because I think we were raised in an era of, you know, the gospel of comfort and peace and the prosperity gospel, like come mm -hmm. follow me and I'll, everything will be well with you. We've talked about that before, but I really did believe that. I think yeah. deep down, I thought I believe in Jesus. I, 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 like I've said this before, I view him as a vending machine. What can you give me, God? I'm, right. I believe in you. I'm saying I believe in you, but what can you give me? Mm -hmm. Why is my life so bad? Why? And I mean, honestly, like 
the amount of transformation I've seen has been remarkable and it hasn't been, it wasn't overnight. Like you said, it's a process. We are a work in process Mm -hmm. always. Yeah. That's why you see people fall in and out of certain things because the seasons of life are different and we either choose to believe lies or we choose to believe truth. That's right. Um, And a big lie that's, you know, been the counterfeit in the season is that God isn't good. He must not be good because this is X, Y, and Z are happening to Mm me. X, Y, and Z are, you know, are happening to them. And, you know, I think just the, the, the greatest lie is pride. Mm-hmm. So we sit there and think we know more than God in our own human understanding of like, you know, well, why is this? We get so wrapped up. I can try to up. figure it out. How can I? Yeah. We get so wrapped up in how we feel. Feelings aren't always fact. And believe nope. me, I've had to learn that the hard way because I, I'm a feeler. Yeah. So I like, it's hard for me to k- take a step back and go, okay, I'm feeling these emotions, but that doesn't mean that they're logical and factual. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like, you know, nowadays we're just adults walking around in tantrum and a tantrum state yeah. in this type of yeah what about world me it's in. all about me yeah you know? and you said and you know it teaches your your family like we talked said earlier like when we're thankful and our posture of our heart shifts in the presence of god then we mm-hmm. start to be we start to be more appreciative of the people around us mm-hmm. and celebrating those people and yeah. celebrating and being thankful that you have people around you that rally up especially mm-hmm. in the workforce you know instead of you know competing and, against people you're like wow look what they look at what they do yeah for me look what they do for you look how they like i don't mm-hmm. know you, you start to celebrate and great, people and gratefulness too for just like the small things in life that's something like Little I feel like I've highlighted. That's right. I've I've highlighted that so much to our kids lately because I feel like they're always complaining about whatever food I make them, and it oh, drives me nuts. They're always like, "I don't want that." It's hey. torture. And I'm like, "Stop." Mm-hmm. You know. And I'm like, "Man, I thank God all the time that I can go to the grocery store and buy healthy food, right? Mm-hmm. Good quality food for our kids and our family. That's a lot to be grateful for, right?" And I'm like. There's, there's a kid out there that would kill for a peanut butter and jelly right now. Mm-hmm. May not be the, the greatest meal ever that mm-hmm. you've ever had, but let's be grateful for it, you know? And so I think even those small things and teaching our kids that is like, it may not be what you want, mm-hmm. but thank God that, you know, you mm-hmm. meet our needs. Like mm-hmm. I've, I've prayed every day, like, man, you know, our needs before we even pray them. Mm-hmm. You, you his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways right. are higher than our ways. Yeah. You, you give us what we need for today. Don't worry about tomorrow, mm-hmm. you know, um, you give us food for, nothing, for our, yeah, be anxious for all nothing, things with pray about everything. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, I feel like I walk around just quoting these things over myself every day over the kids. And it's like, mm-hmm. cause it really does like change everything. Our church. I love it. Our pastor always says like, um, he says, you know, like the, whatever, not motto, whatever he says mm-hmm. of the church <laughs> is to take people from yeah. corporate encounters with God to daily personal encounters with God. And when you get in the presence of God daily, you begin to hear God. And when you begin to hear God, everything in your life changes. And it's so simple and profound. And it's like, if you'll just get in the presence of God and you begin to hear God and you move and you just hear and obey, hear and obey, and you just do what God's asking of you today. You know, so often we look at the big picture and we say, you know, you could be looking at next year going, okay, what's going to happen next year? God, I want to be used. How are you going to use me? All this stuff. Don't think of it like that. Mm -hmm. I like to like say, Lord, like each day, just give me a glimpse today. Give me a word today. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that he's a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. And if you think about a little lamp, you know, it just lights enough for you to take a Mm -hmm. couple more steps forward. And I think don't look at the big picture. Just take the next couple steps that the Lord's asking you to take and enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. We get too like too caught up in everything control or whatever it is like just enjoy the process yeah and if you once you get to a place where you can see the big picture and it doesn't stress you out it's so freeing because you're like hey you're in the big the big the small the tiny details and it's like you know you're yes and private you're i mean we're not living for this life we're living for something we can't see and it says that so many times in the bible and maybe we can close on the scripture in philippians 4 6 um this is the passion translation it says be saturated in prayer through each day offering your faith-filled requests before god with overflowing gratitude tell him every detail of your life and that's something so profound for me i tell him everything i always tell people write about how you're feeling whether it's have a conversation like you would a best tell him every detail of your life (laughs) anybody that knows me i tend to do that not to random people but the people i love and trust or i I mean they know everything about what What's going on in my day? Yeah. And it says, then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real. 
which is not this world, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. Put into practice the example of all that you have heard from me or seen in my life, and the God of peace will be with you in all things. It's such a good good. way to end it because, you know, I I mean, you know, it's not like I tell people all the time, you know, I'm a super spicy person. I'm not like, (laughs) really? Someone flips me (laughs) off on the road. I'm like, be blessed. Right. You know, I mean, no, that's not what happens. But I think what's cool is that like God meets you like where you are and who you are. And it's Mm. funny to see it. You see the nature of God and every person's personality. And you actually come to life more. You just, you have more self-control. You're able to identify and self-awareness. You're able to identify. All right. I need to go back to the throne room. Give me a second, <laughs> right? Or, or just having a moment, like putting into practice all that you learn. And I think that's always being teachable. Putting, we're putting the Bible into practice. We're putting, be, living a spirit filled life into mm-hmm. practice. Because I'm denying uh, our flesh daily. Yeah, going, no, I'm not going to give into that. That's why words hold no meaning if you don't have actions to that's support right. it. For me, like I, I don't care what you say. Like show me. Mm-hmm. And God's, the Lord's also like show me. Yeah. By the way we live, so many mm-hmm. Christians this day are like, "I'm a Christian, okay, but you look no different than mm-hmm. your neighbor that's an atheist." Well, I think like that <laughs> I on that note too. It's like when you say yeah. "show me," it's like people want to be, "I want to be used by God, I want to be used by God," but it's like show up. There's no perfect time, perfect place. Just start doing it. Start I get showing super triggered up. by the use, just use do me it. thing. So yeah, I, I know. Episode. I know so you I'm not do. Gonna, I'm not gonna go into that, but I think yeah. that like showing, showing up, show, being used. I mean, it's showing up is the opposite of what the world says to show up, right? right. So like. He who is first shall be last. The greatest shall be the least. That's right. And that's a posture of your heart. That's mm-hmm. really like who, like who you are. Humility is everything. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, we love you guys. Thank y'all for listening. We hope that y'all have a great Thanksgiving. Hopefully this uh, inspired you and just mm-hmm. encouraged you to like shift your eyes and to just go into the season just with gratefulness, gratitude, and a thankful heart. And um, yeah. We and all it will have last all year before. long. That's right. That's right. All right. We'll see you guys in the next one.